Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Just a quick word about this video you're about to see. This is not a re-upload or a repeat or whatever you want to call it. I'm just way behind on editing. So the tool pick video you're about to watch, I actually probably picked these tools months ago and uh, I'm just that far behind on editing. So without further ado, let's get right to that video. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel for another Flea Market Finds episode featuring a lot of picks from the outdoor flea market I attended back on May 21st of 2023. Uh, quite a few interesting little items here. The first uh, grouping I put together was at a dealer. He had this uh, one machinist tool, uh, this unusual, very long-handled Lufkin uh, snap gauge. This is a hole gauge. Uh, I've got these and stare it and brown and sharp and had them in Mitotoyo and all that and uh, for those of you who don't know what this is for this is for reaching down into a bore this one was seized up when I got it as is it's got some rust indicated here this didn't look rusty but it was stuck pretty bad I lubed it up a lot so now it moves but it still hangs a little more than it should so it should pop out freely like this side is doing and this side is sticking could also be that the spring isn't strong enough any longer, or the spring could even be broken, but it, it, it is popping back, just not very well. If I could disassemble this and clean it and just hone the parts and put it all back together, I'm sure it would probably work fine, but I don't really have time to do that, to figure out how that all comes apart. Uh, unscrewing the handle, this is the lock. Unscrewing this and taking it out doesn't allow this to come out, so I suspect there's some other trick here that I'm not seeing. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, he had 10 bucks on this. I ended up getting this item thrown in with um, this screw jack right here. This nice screw jack. Maker Unknown. I don't think I saw a name anywhere on this. It's a nice size. Along with this Meditoyo indicator, which appears to be either new old stock or barely used, and it works perfectly. He had $30 on that alone. So I got that, this, the screw jack, and four punches for 40 bucks. And the four punches are these new old stock uh, Hargrave half inch punches. They're marked 310 Hargrave USA half inch. They are center punches, I'm, I'm assuming, judging from how sharp this tip is. And I mean, they're razor sharp and they've never been struck. These are brand new old stock. So that's a nice buy. From that same vendor who I've bought from in the past, I also was able to get him to sell me um, this lot of this lot of five new old stock files and these two different size Craftsman um, unusual adjustable wrenches. These also appear to have very little if any use on them. And then the files, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four of them are Nicholson's and the last one is a Fuller. Interesting to me that somebody bought this for 96 cents at some point, more than likely. Oh, so that was 12 bucks for that uh, lot of files and wrenches. And another vendor I came across, I found this keyless chuck. It's not an Albrecht, it's a, uh, what the hell is it? Something Futuro, half inch. It had 10 bucks on, I ended up getting it for eight. The jaws actually look like they're in pretty good shape but it's a threaded arbor on the back. Threaded mounting, so. Oh, you know what? Wow. Yeah, that's what I thought it said. So uh, this is a Metabo Futuro Chuck. So I'm not sure what this would have come off of, but Metabo is a uh, manufacturer of some pretty good quality uh, tools. Oh, back to that other dealer I got those punches from. I then went back later and was able to put together another deal where I got these uh, six. Also appear to be new old stock. They're dirty from kicking around in a box somewhere, but 
the judging from the ends again they don't look like they've ever been struck and they're Stanley's all Stanley USA and these are uh, 792 punches different sizes 5 30 seconds 6 30 seconds yeah so they're all 5 30 seconds and 6 30 seconds this one had a price of 489 on it probably from when it was in the original hardware store these came out of and uh, I got all six of these for um, $16 and also with that I got this mystery item initially he told me if I could tell him what it was uh, I think he said it was one of those deals you can tell me what it is I'll give it to you well I couldn't tell him what it was and then we had a funny talk about it and well he worked his magic on me and by the time I was leaving there I had to have it so I think uh, I'm probably into these um, punches for two bucks a piece that'd be 12 and so then I uh, yeah so then I paid like four bucks for this mystery item so let's talk about this thing see if you guys can tell me what this is this would be a good uh, mystery tool item for mr. Pete huh maybe maybe not okay seems very ergonomic the handle seems very ergonomically made here to hold it a certain way right it's got almost like a cam surface here to me because there are, I'm getting closer and show you, there are some sharp little teeth or pins or almost like nail tips. It's a claw, a claw. All right, and it's kind of at an angle. You see the angle it's at here? It's going back that way. And this is spring loaded. looks like it's made to be adjusted so we've got a pin here so I loosen this screw and I can relocate this to a different hole to change the the, the length in here all right okay so what is this thing so clearly looks like it was made to be able to go like this and grab onto something dig into something like this right and then Oh yeah, that's, that'll rip my hand right off. <laughs> All right, so I don't know what it is. It looks like it would be for tightening, maybe a, str a strap or something. I don't know. So um, I am noticing there is, I think, something written here. Let's see if I can't make out what that is. And I tell you what we'll do is uh, stay tuned for the end of this video and I will tell you what I found out, if anything. Okay, so this uh, this flashlight with the bazillion LEDs in it, uh, I got this kind of thrown in for free because I bought a cheap pair of jumper cables that were in a little zipper up bag. They said ever ready on the bag. They were really cheesy, but they were like brand new and they had a little carrying bag and I got them for five bucks. And I got those and I gave them to my son so he can keep them in his car in case he ever needs them. You know, cheap jumper cables are, in a pinch, they're better than no jumper cables. But I happened to spot this light with the other stuff, and I was thinking, oh, I don't normally want to bother with, you know, paying money for cheesy-looking lights like this. But this one caught my eye because of the, all the LEDs, and then it's got this weird purple hue to it. So, I don't know whether or not you're supposed to be able to change that color, or why that color is the way it is. I don't know if that's coming through on the video, but it's weird. Lots of times these uh, these things are battery hogs. They'll have, yeah, see, they'll have this typical, as is typical with these, they'll have these funky uh, holsters that you have to put the, uh, at least this, these are double A's, so they're pretty common. And we buy these in bulk because we get a bunch of stuff around the house here that uses double A's. My wife buys a case of them off of Amazon. It's unusual to me. This just isn't that bright. I'm wondering if there's a filter in here. What happens if I take this off? No, it's still purple. What the heck? So how many of you guys own one of these, know exactly what it is, and were laughing at me? I, I just looked it up. Esco light. It's a UV flashlight. So this is UV. Black light, so to speak. Where did I put that Elvis poster? 
Elvis on black velvet. <laughs> I, that's the only thing that comes to mind. I don't know, but if you're my age, you may recall back in the day, uh, you know, like I think in the 80s, there was a whole thing where you could get these black light posters for your room. And the idea was, you know, you'd have a black light you could buy and you'd shine the black light. You turn the black light on in a dark room with those posters and like, wow, man. <laughs> I got this uh, pair of clamps for the 10 bucks that it was marked. He was pretty firm on the price. And uh, I just decided, well, I was going to grab them because um, I was thinking about, these are 800 amp capacity according to the uh, thing here. And I think... I read something on here. Yeah, this is manufactured by the Associated, Associated Equipment Corporation of St. Louis, Missouri. So I think these are good old US of A. Um, it appears like they even have replaceable jaws. And it might come with a couple extras. Anyways, these seem to me like uh, they might be great for my... Uh, doing a little bit of R&R &R on my large Craftsman charger. That's why I bought those. This is uh, an Ames indicator for 10 bucks. Normally, I don't want to pay too much for Ames indicators, and I didn't pay too much for this one. This one's a little sticky. It works perfectly. Typically, a little, just a little bit of cleaning and lube, and this will work perfectly fine. This is an Ames indicator, but what caught my eye about this one is it is a metric one, millimeters. So I don't come across as many metric ones. And it appears to be in excellent condition. And it's in the original box for 10 bucks. I picked up this little scale. I believe this might be for game or fish or whatever. It's got the sharp hook there. It looks like, you know, you would stick that through something on an animal or a fish to maybe weigh it. And it's digital and it won't turn on. So the possibility here is that either, oh, it's just a dead battery or it's complete junk. So I got it for a buck. I offered a buck, he took my offer of a buck. If it's junk, I'm only out a buck. If it's not, this might come in handy for occasionally wanting to weigh, uh, you know, things, various things, so whatever. Well, I had a couple of AAA batteries sitting here that were okay, and I put them in, and it turned on. Um, you press this button at zeros apparently. If you press and hold it I thought it would turn it off but all that does is turn on the uh, backlight so you can see it at night. Press and hold it again it'll turn off the backlight. I'm assuming maybe it's going to go to sleep. I'm hoping. Because the other buttons well let's see it's in pounds. Uh, I don't know what the other button does here. All right, so this button with a U on it is for units. I can go from pounds to pounds and ounces, and then also to uh, kilograms. But this one's a mystery here. This button says M, must be mode. And then it looks like it has several different modes. One, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine modes? No, I don't know. That doesn't seem right don't know all right so I zeroed this out with the weight of the uh, D ring or the whatever this ring is clevis on there so it's not taking that weight into account and I got a 10 pound weight on here and it looks like it's working pretty good one last thing about this it does say fi uh, 50 kg slash 110 pounds so that must be the max range so That'll be good enough for when I want to weigh, like, say, a, a reel of copper wire or something like that. This next item I've never seen before. Uh, it's exactly how I found that on the guy's table. Actually, I think this was in a box of junk. And uh, it's clearly marked Sterrett, so I know it's made by Sterrett. And it's clearly got the number 206 on it, so I figured it'd be easy enough to figure out what it is. My guess actually was I thought it was for dressing uh, grinding wheels. My thinking was well that there was some way that this groove right here was made to lock down on 
a T slot and then the idea would be you'd actually since this is already at an angle you would just put a standard uh, dressing diamond in here but this hole is threaded all right and then when I got it home and I looked in the catalog the mystery was quickly unraveled it's a micrometer stand I didn't even know Starrett made a version of, uh, of a micrometer stand so the idea behind a micrometer stand is you take your regular outside micrometer stand you clamp it on this so you can sit it on the bench and have both hands free and use your regular outside micrometer as a gauge but I'm still a little perplexed because this photograph shows uh, this piece right here that I'm missing obviously but you notice how it's almost looks like that piece threads directly into a ball joint right in the surface of the uh, of the top in other words mine there's the ball but it has this almost like an extension built onto it. Now, whether or not that'll unthread from this beats me. I'm not going to try it. It's got some serious rust. And unfortunately, there was no sign of any other parts that went with this. Honestly, at the time when I was looking through the guy's junk, if I had spotted that other piece, I don't know whether or not I would have even figured out that it went to this. I know when I went back the following week or two weeks later, I... I'm sure if I saw this dealer there, I looked through his stuff real closely to see if I could find it. But anyways, that's that. Oh, I wanted to show you one other thing. This is my earlier uh, Starrett catalog. And I just wanted to show you the same model number, 206. It was the same thing back then. It's a micrometer stand, but it looked like that. Now that would be a pretty cool one to come across. I'm sure that's probably in the list of Holy Grail items uh, for Starrett collectors. This next little pile of items right here I got for five bucks and there's one piece that's uh, missing because I already gave it to my son. And uh, I put together this little lot and got it for five dollars and it included a Swiss Army knife, a genuine uh, Swiss Army knife uh, made by that Victor, Victor, Victorian X or whatever it is, the company they see on uh, Swiss Army knives. And uh, it was on the outside it was uh it was an advertising piece that actually said marlboro the marlboro cigarette brand normally i wouldn't uh want to glorify cigarette usage by giving it to a kid but he's a young man now and he's smart enough to know that smoking is a bad idea so and he loves um swiss army knives that's what he tends to collect so i said all right i'll grab that for him and uh then this was just sitting there i don't even remember what this said on it I think this might have been a boring bar when it started its life and somebody uh, ground a chisel point on it. So I'm not even sure what I'm going to end up doing with this. It occurred to me I could probably braise a piece of carbide on the end of this and turn it into another uh, boring bar again or who knows. But I mean it was just there with a bunch of other junk so I threw it in. And then, uh, I thought this might be handy on my test bench. This is a uh, quarter inch um, mono jack for like plugging into a guitar amp or something like that to alligator clips. And then this I've never seen before. Um, I've had quite a few of the belt lacers. Uh, this says it's a number one hook adapter for the number nine lacer. So this would be an accessory for a number nine belt lacer, probably a clipper belt lacer. So this might be of use to somebody who has one of those belt lacers. I'll have to look on eBay and see if I could find any. Again, it was just gonna, you know, no sense in just leaving it there. This is a, a US made live center. Um, it's currently a dead center. Uh, <laughs> This is made by the Ideal Company of Sycamore, Sycamoreville, USA, I think. Looks like it's a number two Morse taper. Now, the reason why I call this a dead center currently is because this is seized. So I got this as is for five bucks because I think I'll be able to fix this. This has got all of this, um, 
I don't know what the heck it is. Some of these shops, they use some sort of a lube that just turns to almost like concrete. I already chiseled some out and I still can't get this to turn, but there's a snap ring in here. I think I'll be able to disassemble this, clean it and put it back together and make it work again. So live center, this is supposed to, this is supposed to stay stationary in the tailstock of your lathe and this is supposed to spin freely in a ball bearing insert. This was actually one of the first buys when I got there and it was a uh, guy had a bunch of stuff and he let me basically go through all of his stuff, put together a pile, which is gave me this metal box, everything in here, plus these two wrenches out of a pile of wrenches that he had. Got the whole deal for 22 bucks. This is a nice SK inch and a quarter wrench. Nice USA made wrench. And this one is a inch and one eighth craftsman. Also forged in USA. Let's zoom in a little bit and see what else we got here. We got a drill point gauge, a number 16 from the uh, General Hardware Manufacturing Company. So this gives you your correct angle for uh, sharpening your drill points. And then it's also got a built-in protractor feature and actually on the back here, yeah, a lot of these had this little chart, this little handy dandy chart to show you all the miracles this thing can do. A little uh, like pocket-sized caliper here, also general hardware, a punch, with somebody like General Hardware products, this is a General Hardware drive pin punch. This is a number size drill index. It's a Sterrett, rusty, but still serviceable. Oh, here's another one of these General Protractor. Oh, there's three of them. Uh, here's some interesting spanner wrenches. This is a Williams, and this is a Proto. Another General Hardware. That's seen a lot more pounding. That's the first Sterrett punch I found in the bunch. Huh. The Sterrett zero to one inch mic. True to Sterrett quality. It's a number 230, and it is, well, it's in need of calibration. It's off. A thou, but that's no big deal. Even the lock works and the friction thimble works. It's actually a decent little micrometer. Clean it up. Whatever's in this thing. Oh, that's a long, that's a pulley tap, they call that. See, it's a regular tap with a very, very long shank. That's because if you need to get in close to uh, the, the side of a pulley, pulley tap. And then these, Wal, uh, Walden, Walton, sorry, Walton tap extractors. I've had these, I've got a set of these that I keep for myself. And then I've had sets of these that looked almost brand new. And then uh, here's a, uh, here's a mishmash of uh, various, oh, look at this, there's some reamers just thrown in here randomly. Some of these reamers, oh, these are tapered reamers, okay. All right, so we'll have to go through and get the reamers out of there that don't belong in there. And, oh, actually that, these are these little buttons. Um, so if they're in there, it's supposed to be, take the cap off, store them in here. There's one right there. So that would thread into a hole on like uh, a part that you want to transfer the center lines of the holes to and it'll give you a little tiny sharp point in the position of the center of that hole, threaded hole. Then you put your blank piece over the top of the, these points, strike it with a hammer and it'll transfer those marks to the other part. And they come in all different sizes. And then the idea was you store them in the back of this little holder. Give you a little better look at this thing. So you store that in the back of this little holder, put the cap on so they don't fall out. And then that little end right there, that little business end, that's actually so you can use this as a tool to help you hold the thing when you're screwing them down into the uh, into the hole, the threaded hole. 
So I'll have to check if I don't have enough of this size, I'll keep this for myself. There's another one. There's another one. Bonus reamers here. What the heck is this? I swear that's going to taper to it, that drill bit. These don't belong in there. Okay, we could sell that just like that. That doesn't belong in there. So it turns out this tool is a upholsterer's tool for reupholstering chairs and sofas. It's actually for stretching the webbing material that goes underneath these springs uh, to, to stretch it tight before it's stapled into position. All right, guys, we're going to bring this tool pick video to a close. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please consider sharing this video. Take care.